Hello, my name is Gordon. Thank you for joining me here today. Have you ever wondered, can I grow vegetables inside? And how can I do this as successfully as I do it outside? Well, I've been looking for information for years on YouTube, online, with very limited results, no complete package. So what I've done here today is I've taken a leap of faith this season and I actually invested, it was very reasonable. I will show you exactly how I did that in future videos to come. But this is a super exciting thing for me and I cannot wait to show you the results I have after only four weeks. Welcome to my setup. This is my 10 foot by 10 foot by seven foot high tent. I was easily able to accommodate this in my basement as it is undeveloped and I wanted a full size garden. So many options available online for very reasonable prices. I will explain that in videos to come later. So as you can see, you need the space and then you need to pick your lighting options. Now, while many people use LEDs, they are very expensive. I've decided to go the more traditional way with metal halide and high pressure sodium bulbs. So the lighting requirements for this tent, because it is 10 foot by 10 foot, you require 1000 watts of light for five feet by five feet. So I need two lights in here. So it's very obvious and you can see there's plenty of light in here. So what I have chosen is this more economical light, which is very reasonable to purchase online. I have a metal halide bulb here, which shows more of the blue white spectrum, which is typically the high summer light that is used for growing. On this side, I've installed a high pressure sodium bulb, which actually grabs more of the orange red spectrum, which is more for the blooming cycle. Now I've done a lot of research on this and most people will say you can use either or you can use a mix. So I've just decided to use a mix. And on this side with the high pressure sodium, I put more of my fruiting plants because they will bloom lemons, limes, grapefruits, those sorts of things. And on this side of the tent under the metal halide, more blue white light, I am growing all of my vegetables and it's working out extremely well right now. So, you know, the high pressure sodium bulbs and the metal halide bulbs will cost you a little bit more on power because they need to go through a digital ballast and then need to be plugged in. They do use a bit more energy. LEDs are more efficient that way, but I tell you way, way cheaper to buy this type of a setup and it's working extremely well. So the bulbs inside the tent, the metal halide and high pressure sodium bulbs are plugged into ballasts. So these are digital ballasts and they're very inexpensive. I will tell you once again in later videos exactly where I got them from and how cheap it is. So as you can see here, I have them coming out one of the vents of the tent and they're plugged into the ballast which I have on a platform. There's two of them up there. They're 1000 watt ballasts. Those ballasts now reduce the energy and the power coming through and convert it to be plugged into an electrical outlet. So I have that there. And as you can see, I have timers in there as well. So let's talk about adequate light now. So typically for vegetables, you need at least that 10 to 12 hours of light. That's what they're used to outside all summer long, you know, and into, into the growing and blooming season. So, you know, I'm running this 12 hours a day. I, you can pick any schedule you want, but 12 hours a day is ideal. It heats the temperature up in the tent and that does cause a bit of an issue and I will be explaining that shortly, but it does give the perfect light and I can tell you I've been doing this for just over a month now and it's absolutely incredible. This tent setup will get very, very warm with the HPS and the metal halide lights inside. So it is necessary to put in some ducting that connects to the fan outside. So as you can see here, I have six inch ducting that just vents through this tubing here, sealed nicely and connects to the fan on the other side and that sucks all the air out. As you can see, I also have this in the top corner of the tent where the air is the warmest. So that's optimum. You can also actually connect this to the actual housings for the lights. They do have 
six inch connections if you want to suck that through there and get rid of the heat from the lamp but i found that not necessary i was actually going to try that and it really didn't make much of a difference because uh, the fan is only running on half speed outside and this vent in this corner is absolutely perfect so as i had just showed you i have the vent hanging inside the top section of this corner of the tent because you want that a little bit higher up that's where all the heat comes out and I have it mounted to this exhaust fan this is a very decent exhaust fan very inexpensive and it is exhausts all the hot air out okay now you do not need to have this actually mounted here it can be mounted inside the tent anywhere I just chose this because it was handy for me and then it's off the floor all right so this also does not need to be vented outside because there is no foul odor coming from inside the tent. You're only growing vegetables. If you're growing cannabis, completely different story would need to be vented outside. So as you can see, it is a very simple setup to get this going. So the next piece of equipment I'm showing you here is a digital thermostat. This is not a requirement, but what this does is you can set a high limit for temperature or humidity the fan will automatically come on. As you can see, it's plugged into the fan and it will automatically adjust the amount of suction out of the tent so it does not run 24 seven. So when the lights shut off, you don't have to come and shut the fan off. It just keeps going down to nothing when there is no more heat. I do have it set at a 25 centigrade or 77 Fahrenheit setting because I do not want the temperature higher than that because it could be detrimental to the growth of many vegetables such as peas what I have in there right now they do not like anything above you know 26 27 Celsius close to 80 Fahrenheit they perform much better in slightly cooler conditions so this allows me to control that completely remotely so let's take a look at what is actually going on here I planted everything from seed just over four weeks ago as you can see here, I'm just focusing in on green beans. So all I have here is four pots of green beans and you can see they're in full bloom and growing unbelievably large leaves. They're super healthy. This typically takes two to three times the time outside in my climate. So this is turning out to be an incredible success. So in this corner of the tent, I have peas. So I have four pots of peas, two different types. These extremely tall peas here are Lincoln peas. I planted them from seed. I did soak the seeds overnight. It does increase germination a bit just over four weeks ago. It's very difficult to see here on this video, but they are over five feet tall and they are getting ready to bloom. This has worked incredibly well. And as you can see, I've had to provide some support for these peas. Otherwise, they just flop down onto the ground. The peas in the corner here are Alaskan peas. They are a little bit slower to grow, but they are coming very nicely, as you can see. And again, only after just four weeks, about one month. On this edge of the tent, I planted butter leaf lettuce. And you can see this is one month. It is incredible. We've been harvesting this constantly. I've never seen this grow so fast and so robust as I did in here, once again, all from seed. Here I have some spinach, which is taking a little longer to catch for some reason, but it's coming up really nicely. Did make one bit of an error as the seeds were planted and then water was introduced on top and they kind of slid off to one side. So I would correct that next time when I do it. Over here, I have bell peppers. I have two pots of bell peppers. They typically take a lot longer to germinate, but they're coming nicely. After just over four weeks, I'm gonna to have tons of bell peppers. And in this area in the middle, I have three types of tomatoes and six pots. And this was all planted from seed just over four weeks. Almost unbelievable. Look at how tall these are growing. I've had to provide support already. I believe these will start flowering and bearing fruit in as little as two to three weeks in this ideal environment for growing. In this side and this corner of the tent, I have all of my citrus plants. They're nice accompanying plants for the vegetables in here. No bugs whatsoever. I do have a grapefruit tree over there and some limes and lemons on this side. 
great accompaniment and you could put more vegetables here if you like but for this experiment as I do have the high pressure sodium blooming bulb I wanted to see how my citrus plants would perform in here over an entire season in the winter and they seem to be doing extremely well. So the other piece that I wanted to show you it is a very good idea to install an oscillating fan. There's many types of fans you can use. This is a bit of a larger space as it, as it is 10 feet by 10 feet. So I chose a fairly large fan to set it at about a medium setting and it oscillates and provides tons of airflow for all of the vegetables and the plants in this tent. So what I have here is a natural CO2 bag. This is not absolutely necessary but I believe it makes a big difference because inside your home and inside this tent, there is not the same CO2 level that naturally occurs outside, which is very beneficial to the plants. So I've decided to put this in here and after you actually hang it and remove the patch, the CO2 creates naturally from this mycelial mass and falls down to the plants and to the root structure because CO2 is heavier than air. So I believe it is making a big difference, completely optional. I do have two bags hung in here for this size of tent. So definitely something you could think of setting up. Let's talk pots and soil media. What I've chosen here are actually fabric pots. They are five gallon size and they seem to be doing just fine for every type of application I have here. The reason I've chosen the fabric pots for this first experiment is because the research is showing that natural air pruning occurs through the fabric versus a solid pot. So I'm seeing some results here that actually are very, very favorable and has me convinced already that these fabric pots are probably the best. Now for soil media, I use only regular indoor potting soil as this test. I found it was the cheapest out there versus things like, you know, black earth that you could get in bags that you would have in the garden. Uh, cocoa core is also something that's used. It's quite more expensive, really good, uh, allows a lot of airflow. But with the bags here, I thought I'd just try regular potting soil. It's fluffy. It has some basic nutrients in it and everything seems to be going very, very well right now. You do have a ton of options and we can talk about that in later videos. So let's talk watering. For ease of watering, I've become sort of an expert at this. I do have some basic drip systems installed so I do not need to go in and water every day. So I take these basic drip systems which you can get online anywhere or at a local hardware store on a quarter inch line and I have them adapted to a regular hose connection that's in the basement which I will show you next. But they are adjustable at the top so you can adjust the flow. You can adjust the time with the timers. I will show you that in a second as well. And you just place it right in the middle of the plant. You set the desired time, you know, three to five minutes every day for a type of flow that you would like. And you never ever have to worry about watering again. So what I have set up here for the water connections, you can see I have it split for more watering options I have set up in the basement for my other plants that are out in the open. But I have these basic timers and they connect to a full adapter that adapts it down to a quarter inch line. The timers can be programmed for time of day, how many days, the specific time you want to have watered, and they're simply run up through my ceiling and into the top of the tent, and then I run them into each pot. It's a little bit of expertise, not absolutely necessary, but I tell you, it takes all of the guesswork out of watering. The one thing you will have to remember, because this is just a basic, connection coming right from basically the tap into your line. The water pressure does get reduced. So I recommend having no more than 15 to 18 connections for drips. So 15 to 18 pots per line. That's why I have five set up here because I do have other things going on in the basement. One last thing I want to mention, you can see I'm wearing glasses. These are protective glasses for the types of lights that are in the tent, the metal halide and the high pressure sodium. I never spend a ton of time in there. If I do, I always put these on. 
if I do have neighbors that come over, friends want to see how everything is growing and they want to actually physically go in the tent, it's a good idea to wear these. But as you can see also, the tent is equipped with a view window. So anybody can just take a quick look in without actually going into the tent. But if you're like me, I like going in, interacting with the plants, taking a closer look, see if any blooms are coming. And that's just the way that, that I roll. So thank you very, very much for watching today. I will have many more videos and I encourage you to request other instructional videos that you want that have stemmed from this video. This was a long time in the making for me because I've not been able to find any basic indoor vegetable garden grow setup that I could actually take and put into use. And that's exactly why I'm doing this right now. So if you do like what I have set up here and you want any more information at all, feel free to message me and make sure that you hit the subscribe button and hit the little bell so that you are alerted when my next video is out. This is meant to just be an introductory basic setup and I will get into more detail later, including how to feed the plants, what I use to feed the plants when they're at the right level, when they're going into the bloom cycle. It's so easy and simple and I thank you for watching.